sponsored by Sneak Energy. lads welcome back to coyote racing for another video now recently since sim racing has kind of exploded in the world since covid 19 has basically trapped everyone inside people are wanting to get into sim racing even those that haven't really got any interest in it and recently it's been a bit of an explosion with people asking people who do sim race what's the best way i can get started in sim racing and honestly the best way to get started out is with one of these. Every sim racer that you see on the net today has started out with one of these, a simple gamepad. And if I may be honest, it's also one of the cheapest ways to get into sim racing. But it does beg the question, how does someone who uses a rig that's worth over £2,000 compare to someone who uses one of these? Now, it goes without any question that, yes, using a steering wheel is, of course, the better way and faster way of getting a car around a circuit. But... How much faster is it really? So which is why today we are in Automobilista 2 to test out that question. Automobilista 2 is the latest sim racing game to come out, so of course it's going to have all the features. So this should be a very good platform to test out what we're here to do today. So our weapon of choice for today is going to be this, the Caterham Superlight, which is kind of like a racy version of the road going Caterham, and we're going to be taking it around Cadwell Park, which you can't see right now because it's right above my face camera. Now the reason why I chose this circuit and this car in particular is one, it's very light, it requires quite a little bit of knowledge of the car to drive it, because this car does like to go all over the place if you're very aggressive, and Cadwell is a very twisty track in the later sections of the circuit, so it should be a good challenge for us today so without any further ado let's get into it now I know it says it's a six-speed sequential but it's automobile so you can use it pretty much however you want to so I'll be using it full manual today either because I feel like I've got a little bit more control when I use a clutch in the shifter and and away we go now admittedly I don't I'm not really all that knowledgeable with Cadwell Park I've never really driven here it's a very very narrow circuit but it is perfect for cars like this Caterham because the Caterham is a handful. I mean, this isn't even the road going version. The road going version is even more difficult to drive because that one's got 300 horsepower, twice the power of this one. But I wanted to actually be able to get around this circuit alive today. So right now we're just warming up the car for our lap. We're gonna do a couple of laps and just see what kind of time we can do. I also know that fifth gear, the program with Tiff Nadal and Jason Plato and Vicky Butler Henderson, they used to do a lot of uh, tests here at Cadwell Park. And I can see why. It's a glorious little race circuit, this one. It's so tight and twisty. Imagine a Formula One race here. No overtaking would be done. All right, here we go. Here's, here comes our first time lap. Here we go. Again, I don't really know my way around this circuit at all, so I'm just taking it very cautiously just so I can get used to the car and the way it handles around these corners. Also, getting knowledge of the circuit will actually give the controller people a bit of an advantage so they can see and get a use to the track. Because if I did it the other way around, that just would not be fair. Because obviously the steering wheel is going to win. Now, what these cars do understeer quite a lot, so you have to like balance this car quite a lot on the throttle when you go around a corner just so you can get the car to rotate. Oi! Don't want to over-rotate it though. That would be bad. Just kick the clutch to get the revs up. Oops, oops, that's not good. So where we're gonna land our first Italian lap? It's gonna be a 142.5. I reckon we could go a lot faster than that. Here we go. This is probably my favorite car to drive in this game. You just chuck it into the corners and it's so light. The, the grip just stays with you. You can put tremendous amount of faith in this car and it's just going to carry you around. Unlike the, uh, it's road going version, the 620R, that thing's just got too much power. It's practically undrivable. Well, it is drivable, it's just I'm crap at driving, so. I reckon we could get a good, another couple of laps in before we uh, run the tank dry. We're a second up on our time there, 41.4. Ah, we're going too slowly through here. Get it down at the third gear, get the car rotated around this corner. And here we go. You just tap the brake, 
put the throttle on, the back end steps out, and away you go. Now, for those people that are a bit put off by me playing AMS2 because um, because of the mixed reviews when it first came out, that was like before the game was actually like fully uh, released. But the game's been improving a lot since then. Like when I first played the game, when it first was available to the public, I did not like it. Uh, I thought it was too arcadey, and the force feedback was naff, and the pedal input was rubbish. But now that's been improved, and this game is so, so good now. Honestly, recommend this game as a great first time game for people who are just getting into it. Like, over the course of two months, this game has changed a lot. And I mean a lot. Whoa! Bit of a lock up there. We've only got three litres left and the tyres are starting to fade a little bit. But we're a second up on our first time. Or our best time, sorry. Get down to second gear, coast it in. Get the power on, get the back end out. Clip the apex there beautifully. Second and a half up on our time there. Just let it coast in, get on the brakes. Just a tiny little bit through there. Make sure you clip the apex. Don't deep throat them as someone once pointed out to me that I do. And around the final corner. And where we, is that going to land us? A 138.2. I reckon we can go faster still. Drift out wide. Get off the throttle. Don't break. Power. Oh, the power! It's so much fun, this car! I don't want to go to the controller at the moment. I'm just having too much fun with this. Obviously, someone like Jardia can get this car around here a lot faster than I can uh, with enough practice. I mean, this is my first time on this circuit, admittedly, but... Man, this is fun. I don't care if I'm slower than other people around this circuit. This is just pure fun. I need to organize a race in these cars. No joke. I need, I need to get the boys together. Call up Jimmy and Jardy here and Steven and Hemi and get the boys together and we'll go racing in, in this. And here we go on the final stretch. And across the line in. 1 minute 38.1. We're a tenth up on our time there. Now obviously, I could go around this circuit all day and try and get as much, because there is obviously going to be more time to get out of this uh, car around this circuit, but we're not here to set blistering times. We're here to just do a comparison. Um, I may have spent a little bit too much time on that, because <laughs> holy cow, that's fun. <laughs> so now we're going to switch over to the Xbox controller and see what we can do and see how close we can get to that 138.1. The, the record for this track in this car is a 132.6. I am way off that time. It goes to show how much knowledge of the track I have. <laughs> Gamepad, make, custom or Microsoft. There's no Sony or PlayStation. Right, let's see how well we actually do on our first attempt out. Holy cow. Oh, this is this doesn't look good because this is calibrated almost perfectly. What on earth? This game is fantastic on controller. So how, this, how does this feel right off the cuff? Well, it's certainly a lot easier on my arms since the force feedback was quite high on the uh, the wheel. But the default configuration for um, an Xbox controller is actually amazing. This feels really grounded, really nice to use, really nice. If I beat my wheel time on a controller, I'm going to be very, very concerned. All right, here we go, our first time lap. See how bad, oh good, this goes. Oh, it's, when the car starts squirming on a controller, it's actually quite nerve wracking. The difference for me, the biggest difference for me, isn't the fact that like I'm sitting down in a wheel and I'm driving it around like it's a real car. The difference for me is the, um, is the confidence. When I'm getting around a corner on the wheel, I want to step the back end out. So then I get the car pointing in the right direction and I can make finite adjustments. With a controller, I'm a lot more nervous to get the back end out. But it doesn't matter what you hear, every sim racer that you see online starts somewhere and it is always with one of these. Always. So our first time that was a 150.1. Dear me. We've got to work up uh, about 12 seconds. Oh, oh. It's so scary getting the, the, um, 
the back end out because you have to rely visually about where the car is instead of feeling it through the wheel. That's my biggest thing that like is knocking me a little bit. I wish I knew all the corners of this circuit, like the names wise, so then I could just guide you through it. But right now I'm just being a muppet diving around the circuit. I'm so glad Cadwell is now got like a place in uh, sim racing or video games now. Oh my word! Because after watching a like a lot of fifth gear throughout my childhood, I used I used to be obsessed with uh, fifth gear and top gear. Like that was my job that I wanted to be when I grew grew up. I wanted to be a Top Gear or a 5th Gear presenter, so I had, uh, I taped all of the 5th Gear episodes, all of the Top Gear episodes. We just shaved 8 seconds off that lap, but I remember 5th Gear used to always be at this circuit, as well as Anglesey. Now Anglesey would be a, a good addition to um, some sim racing, because that would uh, bring out a lot of nostalgia, watching uh, Jason Plato and uh, Tiffany Dell battle it out in a, like, a Dodge Viper and a Corvette was amazing to watch. Getting the back end out, we're getting a bit more confident in this car now, on controller. But we're seven tenths down. What's weird about turning in on a corner on a controller is that you could just tap the brake and flick it in. It's much harder to do that on a wheel. So that was a 140.6. Very close to our first time on the wheel. All right, okay, here we go. Let's knuckle down for a lap. I'm gonna shut up for a lap and see where we get. Um. <laughs> I'm terrible. We're gonna uh, leave that to the uh, the editing process. Where are we gonna be at? Come on! A 139.4. I'm gonna have one last attempt because this is the amount of laps that we've had in the wheel, just to see if we can get any eke any more time out. Three tenths. That's good. <sighs> I'm trying my hardest here. I. Can it get any faster? Let me have another couple of goes just to see what happens and see where I can get. Let's go! Let's see what we can do. A 139.1, we are one second off our time. A whole second. Now after like restarting the session a bunch of times and just getting fresh rubber and uh, top loaded of fuel, I honestly don't think I can go much faster than that personally. But we have one last trick up our sleeve. Don't go anywhere. Now you may think a controller is a controller. You can't really do anything to it. It's just one of those things. You buy it, that's what you get. Not necessarily. With a little bit of online digging, I found this. A little mini steering wheel, an add-on for your Xbox controller, effectively turning your controller into a mini steering wheel. So now, whenever you twist it, it just moves the thumbstick over like a mini steering wheel. 
you can pick these up for like fifteen dollars. All you have to do is like just basically type that in, and it should pop up. It's not it's not expensive at all. So can we get within our magical half a second with a controller? Oh, this already feels very weird. It's not immediate. Oh, this feels very strange. I, I broke it! I broke it! It's come off! This isn't stacking up to be anything great, I will be honest. This obviously is going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I can see how this would work. Okay, let's do our first time lap, see where we're, we're at. You have to do a lot of turning before the any input actually comes about of this thing. Although in some areas, when you're going down the fast bits, it feels dead almost. <laughs> this is so weird! I don't like this at all! I think I could actually get this to work a bit better if I just set it up right. Like, it's software rise. Now, the immediate thing that I'm feeling with this um, little mod is that... It's, it's kind of got, it's like, itself, a, a, an automatic dead zone. Which I feel like has to be tweaked within house software. Because you turn it, you turn it, you turn it, nothing, and then a lot of turning all of a sudden. Maybe it's me being silly because I'm, I've got myself used to doing very little movements with just the standard controller. Turn! Crying out loud! This is oh, this is awful. <laughs> What's our first time black gonna be? I beg to differ. At 154, dear me, we've got a mountain to climb. I'm concentrating so hard at just this little thing. I I want to I want this to be good. I really do. We're not actually doing too bad, though. Despite me feeling like I'm all over the place, we're actually only a tenth behind our fastest time. Go on. Turn it in. Power! No! No! Why would you do that? I, I, I'm still making up my mind if I like this mod or not. It's just so bizarre. I reckon it's one of those things that you just really need to get used to. It's like when you first sit in a... in like, do sim racing with a wheel for the first time. It takes quite a bit of getting used to at first, and then you settle into it and it's a lot it's a lot smoother. I reckon with enough practice I could actually be a lot faster with it. In some instances I can see the car is just going a lot smoother than it normally is. But man, it's it's a lot more challenging and it's a lot more fun. But I think we're about to get a, a clean lap in. I'm too scared to look at the clock. A 140.1, dear me, I reckon we can do it. Let's do it, let's knuckle down and see if we can actually Get within that half a second. Crying out. Oh, stop spinning there, please! I'm, but now I'm getting used to it. I can see the point of this, and it actually feels... It, I actually feel like I'm being a lot more precise now with this thing. The concentration levels. Just to get this thing around is so high right now. Come on. Get it over. There we go. That was good. No! We were doing so well! It does give you a, a, a bigger sense of consequence, though. Uh, if you make a mistake with this thing, you're going to notice. Oh, man. It just feels like it's getting away from us because my ha my thumbs get sweaty. And it just feels like the grip, I'm, uh, like I, lo I lose it almost. We're getting so close, though. It's amazing, though, that with a, with a controller and a mod, even without a mod, I can get within a second than I do with my uh, with my wheel. Okay, so controlling slides with this thing is next to impossible. Let's get that out clear and out of the way. If you want to control the slide with this thing, forget about it. 
much easier, much easier with the standard controller. But if you want to be more precise, this thing's much better. This looks good! This looks good! Come on! Oh, yes! Within four tenths of our best lap with the wheel! Oh, that feels good! Oh, really, really hammering it through there as well! 138.5, four tenths off our best with the wheel. I'm not gonna lie, it's been an hour. I've been do struggling to do this with this mod for an hour. <laughs> Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, would I recommend this little mod to people? I'd say yes, you can. It's actually a very good once you get used to it. It's uh, You can be a lot more precise. But that does answer the question though, is can you be as fast as someone with a direct drive wheel, such as myself, with a controller? And the answer is yes, you can. Would I go back to being using a controller? Um, no, <laughs> I much prefer using the wheel. You can be so much more precise and so much more consistent with the wheel. You can feel all the detail with the wheel and that's why I'll stick with that. But just before we go, I want to thank today's sponsor of the video, SneakEnergy.com. The sugar-free energy formula that really picks you up and keeps your wits about you sharp. They've helped me a lot in the past when I actually need to focus and concentrate on a late night when I'm tired and I need to race and get those laps in. So be sure to use code DOGGO when you check out at SneakEnergy.com. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the uh, the like button. It would help me out a lot and I would really appreciate it. And until next time, I shall see you all in the future race. Have a good night, everybody.